So 2022 was a good year for the allotment. It had its challenges, every year has its challenges, they're often different challenges from year to year, but there's still quite a few changes that I'm gonna make in 2022, 2023. Some of those changes are just the standard changes that I make every year to reduce my workload, because I'm always reducing my, the work that I do on the allotment. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm reducing the amount of time I spend on the allotment, just the amount of time that I spend working on the allotment. That's partly because I'm getting older, partly because I'm always diversifying my hobbies, uh, partly just because I've got some passionate kind of new hobbies that I want to spend a bit more time on, and I've got more grandkids to look after and all this sort of thing. So, you know, there's a reason to keep on top of my workload reduction sort of approach year on year and the general direction that i'm taking things is more stuff grown more beds planted perennially under deep really deep you know sort of nine inches or so uh, of wood chip uh, and grow less beds in general grow more intensively where i can uh, grow easier crops and all this sort of thing. Anyway, so let me go through the details. Um, <clears throat> right, so these are some of the specific objectives. So the first one is to reduce our allotment water usage and more specifically our time spent watering. So water is not expensive. Water is really, really cheap. Uh, we harvested about £8,000 worth of food from the garden and the two allotment plots last year. And we used about £50 worth of water. So water is just a completely insignificant cost. But time spent watering is another matter altogether. So I just want to reduce the amount of time spent watering. Next one is um, to increase the amount of allotment space that we have for perennials. And as I say, this is a year on year strategy, more trees, more berry bushes, more perennial kales and cabbages and things like that. Just generally moving more and more in the direction of perennials. There's only so far you can go, but we'll go as far as we can, realistically. Um, increase the amount of vertical gardening that we do. I really am enjoying the vertical gardening. We put in this big new uh, permanent frame along one side of the allotment where a, an old ret rotting fence had been and we basically using no more space than the fence. So I planted into the ground where the fence used to be and the width of the growing frame is the same as the width of the fence. So that's been really good and put another one in over winter so i've now got two really big vertical permanent vertical growing frames uh, which i can use for hanging baskets for beans for squash for cucumbers and all of those sorts of things it's been really good and i'm planting into the paths in general or into you know this gap between the fence and that means that the plants are going underneath paths. That's where their roots are going, underneath paths or deep underneath raised beds. So they're not interfering with anything else that's planted. And they're, because they're going deep, and that's partly because of the nature of the things I'm planting, beans, squash, cucumber things, really deep rooted things. Because they're going really deep, there's not very little watering required for them. And of course the paths are covered with a thick mulch of wood chip. Um, or they're covered with paving slabs uh, and of course the raised beds are covered with six inches of raised bed and they're growing underneath the raised beds so they're sort of you know got a mulch of at least six inches on top of them so I've been really pleased with those and there's been minimal watering requirement for those uh, vertical growing things and it's allowed us to grow way more squash than we've been able to before so these are some of the specific changes I'm making on the allotment. Minimal use of containers on the allotment in summer. So I'll still use containers in autumn, winter and spring, but I won't use any in summer. Um, I will still grow a few use containers at home because watering is so much easier at home. Um, and since I'm not using any 
containers on the allotment in summer, I won't be growing any ochre on the allotment this year. I lost my whole ochre crop last year, which is probably part of that decision, but generally it's just because I don't want to have any containers and ochre. I always grow my ochre in containers because I don't have any space for it otherwise. Um, I'm halving the number of tomatoes that I'm growing in the polytunnel. Uh, and that's because the tumbler tomatoes that I grow in containers back home, they've just been great. And I've really not needed anywhere near as many um, tomatoes in the polytunnel. I just like the taste of tomatoes that are grown outside a little bit more than I like the taste of ones grown under plastic. Um, I am going to grow my early peppers in the polytunnel, but just the early ones, so just 25% of my peppers. Uh, less cucumbers, I so said we grew 1,500 cucumbers last year. Uh, that was too many. We only need about a thousand. So I'm only going to have two plants in the polytunnel rather than three and two plants at home rather than four. So hopefully that will just moderate things a little bit. Um, I've really enjoyed this idea of planting in multiple locations. So a few things on my plot, a few things on Debbie's plot, a few things on in the back garden, a few things in the front garden, scattering things around so that if we get a pest on the allotment, my allotment, we might not get it on Debbie's allotment, we certainly won't get it in the back garden sort of thing. You know, this tends to happen, you know, that one year we'll get really bad white fly in one place, but no white fly at all in another place. Loads of cabbage aphid at home, but no cabbage aphid on the allotment. You know, that type of thing. And so scattering things around makes a big difference. Um, so, yeah, somebody mentioned to me a long time ago, think of uh, abundance in terms of diversity. And I've really taken that message to heart. Also, of course, growing multiple varieties helps as well. Uh, so the more locations, the more different varieties you grow, the less likely you are to have any kind of disaster. So next thing is, um, this isn't an allotment thing actually, but it's a thing about the conservatory at home. Stop growing crops to maturity in the conservatory. So I really like doing that, but because we go away on holiday every month, it makes it really difficult to have mature plants in the conservatory because the watering requirement is so onerous. It's not a problem when you're at home all the time. When you're on holiday, it's just logistically difficult to arrange for somebody to come in and water every day. And the watering can be quite tricky, you know, not too much, not too little. Perhaps sometimes it needs to be twice a day, hard to reach up high to do the water and all that. So it's just too much really to ask other people to do. Um, I am going to install drip, gravity fed drip in the polytunnel. Uh, for the peppers and the cucumbers and the tomatoes. We'll see how that goes. And gravity fed is not ideal, but it is what I've got at the moment. Um, <coughs> so I mentioned I'm growing more in the pathways. I'm really excited about this idea. I've got quite big pathways on my plot. and I, The big because when I started growing, I was quite disabled and it was really a struggle for me to move around. And so I thought nice big pathways were ideal because I could kneel down really easily between the paths. Uh, I could get around on crutches and all this sort of thing. Uh, it just seemed a really nice relaxed way to grow. But it, I ended up, I've not got any of those problems really now. Uh, although of course I might have them in the future. Um, but it just got me thinking, I've got all these lovely pathways. They're mulched with a really thick mulch of wood chips. So the soil underneath them is really rich. And I'm not using it at all. So now I'm growing in the paths and growing up vertically behind the beds and at the side of the beds and things like that. So I'm just really excited about the potential for that. And as some of my raised beds rot away and some of them are seven years old this year and so they are starting to rot a little bit, I'm taking some of them out and I am turning those into just perennial uh, beds or wood chipped beds um, and just gradually moving away from having so many 
raised beds. I still have loads of coal frames and low tunnels and things like that, but where it's just a, just a raised bed with nothing on top of it, then I'm just going for wood chip, basically. Uh, we've actually got 30 fruit trees now on the allotments and at home. Uh, we keep on increasing the number of trees, adding uh, you know, favourite varieties, but also an ever increasing number of berry bushes. And so I'm hoping to put some blueberry bushes in on my plot because I love snacking on blueberries in summer. So um, looking forward to doing that. Uh, we're also mulching more. Every year we mulch more. As I, say, I'm, as I said, I'm doing my perennial beds with wood chips. That's all done actually now. Uh, I've been using strulch. It's a little bit expensive, but when you're harvesting £8,000 worth of food, spending £60 worth on, on mulch, is not really that onerous an investment if it reduces the amount of watering I have to do. So um, yeah, so I'm doing that. And of course, there are other options in addition to strulch. We had good experience with strulch last year, uh, but for quite a few people have recommended alternatives as well that are a little bit cheaper. Uh, I do like the strulch though, because it certainly seemed to reduce the problems with slugs. Um, I'm also making more of my own compost. That seems to have been pretty successful so far uh, and trying to make it as weed free as possible. And again, that seems to be pretty good. Um, I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'm making much more use of hanging baskets for early and late crops. So the early crops are things like um, early strawberries. The late crops are things like lettuces, um, but I'm kind of, kind of branch out to more creative opportunities with hanging baskets. I really like it. I like the way they look. I like the fact that they're up high, so they're nice and warm. They get maximum light and they get less pests. Uh, we're growing less potatoes than we did in 2022, just because we don't eat as many potatoes. And so that's giving me quite a few containers and quite a bit of space to do some new things with. So I'm thinking of my, not really micro greens, but sort of mini greens, I suppose you might call them. Um, so things like uh, baby leaf lettuce, baby leaf uh, spinach, uh, baby leaf kales and things like that in these uh, containers. Quite looking forward to that. Um, I'm hunting, I'm hunting at the moment for winter lettuce varieties. So I want to grow more he uh, head lettuce in the polytunnel for harvest in January and early February. Brighton is the one I've found so far that holds really well. There's no de degradation in leaf quality. It's a really great head lettuce, but I'd like some more colorful ones. I'd like some red head lettuces, for example, or bronze head lettuces. And I know that people grow salinovas in America uh, for harvest as head lettuce in the middle of winter. So what are some other varieties? If anybody knows any, I'd be really keen to know about those. Um, we are gradually coming to terms with buying a few things in winter uh, that we don't grow. So we don't grow, for example, cauliflowers but we occasionally want cauliflowers for uh, occasionally for specific recipes. So we don't grow those now, we buy them. Um, although we grow loads of cauliflowers at other times of the year. Um, we are trying to reduce the size of our surplus um, a little bit each year. So we used to grow for 28 people. Now, we're sort of last, last year in summer, we grew for 20 people. I want to really get that down to about four people, four, 14 people. That's kind of my objective, to grow a richer diet for a small number of people. It's going to be my consistent objective for the next decade, probably, to do that. Uh, and then when I get into my 70s, um, then I might drop that down even further because I can't imagine carrying on growing quite as much food as we do now when I get older. Um, I'm trying to stop using fleece outside. I don't like the idea of fleece. For me, it drops too much microplastic into the soil and just into the air in general. 
Uh, I'm trying to use thermocrop wherever I can, in addition obviously to polythene. I much prefer polythene, it seems so much more stable than fleece, but thermocrop seems to be kind of a middle ground. Um, it's pretty good. Um, it's not quite as good as fleece, but I still use a bit of fleece in the polytunnel where there's less wind uh, and for shorter periods of time. But uh, yeah, anybody got any ideas about reducing microplastics? I'd like to hear about that. Uh, making harvesting easier is, yeah, continues to be for me quite a big driver. So I like to harvest things that are vertical. That makes things really easy. So bustle sprouts, collets, squash, beans, those sorts of things, peas. Um, I like to harvest whole heads of lettuce rather than individual leaves because it's a lot less bending down. Uh, I like things that grow up kind of vertically like cos lettuces or tatsoi and things like that rather than things that grow close to the ground because they're more tricky to harvest. Um, so just generally speaking, I'm always kind of looking at things that you know, mean that I spend less time on my knees. Um, and also just getting the right amount of harvest. So less, as I say, less surpluses and things like that. But spinach, things like that, there's a lot of time bending down, kneeling down involved in that. And it's not much fun in winter. And finally, our shed. So our shed froze pretty solid uh, in winter this year, in December. And so we're gonna insulate it to keep it cooler in summer and warmer in winter. The fridge froze as well that's in there. So we've got two fridges, we've got an inside one and an outside one. Um, yeah, I just don't wanna be worried about losing crops in winter if we're gonna get cold snaps again. So this is the, in my gardening career of six and a bit years, we've had two really, really cold winters where we've had losses in the store and it's just, soul destroying really not soul destroying i'm overstaying it really it's annoying to have put all that effort in to kind of grow all this stuff get it nicely processed and everything I'm stuck in the store and then to lose it in the store because you couldn't keep it warm enough or cold enough so yeah i'm going to spend a few hundred pounds and put insulation in there so that is it that's the changes that we're making on the allotment in 2023 my name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.